Hi there, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, I'm going to give a brief overview of operational amplifiers. An operational amplifier, commonly referred to as an op amp, is a high gain voltage amplifier device with a differential input and a usually single ended output. The basic function of an op amp is that the output is equal to a voltage gain, this AVOL, created by the op amp times the difference between the two inputs, this V in plus and V in minus. The voltage gain is very big, and at first glance, this might seem like a silly function, but op amps can be used to create circuits with a wide range of functionality, with some of the more common ones being non-inverting amplifiers, which create a controlled gain based on the value of the feedback resistors, inverting amplifiers, which create a controlled gain based on the value of the feedback resistors also, but for this circuit, the output is 180 degrees out of phase with the input. Voltage buffers, which buffer the input voltage from loads at the output and filters which allow some frequencies to pass and block other frequencies. The original op amps were actually made using vacuum tubes and not semiconductor devices. They were invented in 1941 by Carl D. Schwarzel, but first commercially produced by this Clark Gable looking mother, I mean fellow, George Philbrook. Philbrick's op amp had a gain of 20,000, a gain bandwidth product of one megahertz and an input impedance of 50 kilo ohms. The first semiconductor based op amps were built with discrete components assembled together on tiny circuit boards. And 1964 saw the release of the first monolithic IC op amp, the MUA702 from Fairchild Semiconductor. The monolithic just means that it's an integrated circuit inside a single chip. Modern op amps are all monolithic. The MUA702 was invented by Bob Weidler, but it was prone to short circuits and other problems. Weidler's next op amp iteration came in 1965 and was the MUA709, which used 14 transistors, had a higher gain than the 702, more bandwidth, and was cheaper and more robust. The op amp applications book from analog.com says, so universal was the 709 that it can be regarded as an IC op amp classic. Although the individual specifications were surpassed by many subsequent designs, the 709 remains a milestone as the first widely used monolithic IC op amp. In 1968, Fairchild released the MUA741 op amp. This is perhaps the most popular op amp of all time, and despite having relatively poor performance compared to more recent designs, it is still sold in 2022 when this video was made, as you can see from this DigiKey website. The pinout of the 741 has become a de facto standard and many modern op amps use the same pinout. With examples including low cost op amps like the MCP601 from Microchip and high speed precision op amps like the OPA602 from Texas Instruments. As you can imagine, there are countless things that you could consider when choosing and using an op amp, and we'll get into that in other videos. For now, let's go back and take a quick look at the basic characteristic of an op amp. V out is equal to gain times V in plus minus V in minus, where that gain is very, very big and ideally infinite. What this means is that the output will be equal to the difference between the two inputs multiplied by a big number. But that number is so big that that output's going to be limited to this Vs plus, so the positive power rail at the positive peak, and Vs minus, or the negative rail at the negative peak. Now this might seem kind of weird and not very useful, but there are in fact many things you can do with op amps as I listed earlier, and we'll see many of those in upcoming videos. But for now, to help with the understanding of how this basic characteristic can be used, it's easier to start with the assumption that you're dealing with an ideal op amp so that non-ideal characteristics don't affect the operation and understanding of the circuit. The first ideal characteristic is that the gain of the op amp is infinite. This means that the difference between the two input voltages gets multiplied by a number so huge that the output is going to be either at the maximum positive value or the maximum negative value. Second ideal op amp characteristic is the input impedance is infinite. This means that no current flows into either of the two inputs. Third, output impedance is zero. This means that the output voltage will not be affected by load. So internally, you can think of the drive for V out being some kind of dependent voltage source that's driving the load. Now, if there was an output impedance inside the circuit, there would be a variable drop across that impedance depending on how much current the load is drawing. And with zero output impedance, we don't have to be concerned with that. The fourth characteristic of an ideal op amp is that when the inputs are zero, the output is zero. This is what you would expect from an ideal op amp, but it's good to point out so that you understand there is no DC offset at the output. And fifth, the bandwidth is infinite. This means that the op amp behaves the same way no matter what frequency of voltage passes through. Finally, let's take one last brief look at this basic characteristic of an op amp. V out is equal to the voltage gain times the V in plus minus V in minus. Again, this is weird, but actually so useful. 
The simplest thing that you could use an op-amp for is a comparator, a circuit which can tell you which of the two inputs is greater. And the comparator is the next video in this series on op-amps. If you'd like to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. You can also check out my website, which has all sorts of electrical and electronic circuits content. You can find a link to that site in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.